Nothing yet lives on land, but in the ocean, it's a different story. Life has already been evolving for millions of years at a slow and steady pace. The seas are full of simple, soft-bodied creatures blindly drifting in the currents. Now, however, in the coastal shallows below, evolution has stepped on the accelerator. Predators have taken their first bite. This is Anomalocaris, Earth's first super predator. This two meter long monster owes his success to a monumental evolutionary landmark. Eyes. To combat being visible and vulnerable, 80% of creatures in these shallow seas have sturdy skeletons on the outside of their bodies. These armoured animals are called arthropods. In the future, they'll give rise to insects and spiders. This is Haiku Ichthys. He's the size of your thumbnail, but he's an evolutionary giant. He's the first ever fish our earliest known ancestor. But there are still many more battles ahead. They must adapt or die. Evolution takes over. As millions of years pass, fish build on their basic design. The muscles around their backbone evolve into a powerful tail and fins appear. They evolve a distinct head. He may not look like you or I, but this odd fish is becoming the blueprint for our own bodies. This is Cephalaspis. She's a peaceful grazer who sucks up algae through her jawless mouth. But she's also developed a tough protective head and thick scales. Some creatures here would be recognizable today. Sponges filter food alongside sea urchins. The orthocone is a distant relative of squid and cuttlefish, but he's as long as a truck. This world is terrorized by a new, improved generation of armored arthropods. Meet Brontoscorpio. He's a meter-long monster scorpion with gills and a stinger the size of a light bulb. Pterygotus is the titan of sea scorpions the biggest arthropod of all time. More than three meters long, she's the size of a crocodile. But some forms of life have gained a foothold in this furnace. The first pioneering plants. Cooksonia has a unique survival strategy. It's the first plant to send shoots upwards, trapping extra light to help it grow. This basic design will eventually lead to our tallest forests. Over millions of years, the fish's gills adapt to form the first jaw with the very first teeth. 
Now they're equipped to go on the attack. Some develop tougher bones and muscles in their fins and shoulders, which become the first limbs. This is where our arms and legs began. With this four-limbed design, our ancestors finally hauled themselves out of water onto land. This is the giant amphibian, Hynerpeton, the prototype land dweller for the next 300 million years. Arthropod enemies still exist, but they've shrunk since their Brontoscorpio glory days. In the last 50 million years, plants have developed into trees. And with nothing around to eat them, they've grown into vast forests pumping oxygen into the air. The fish are now our ancestors' enemies. Primitive sharks are constantly on the hunt. But even sharks are small fry in comparison to some flesh-eating fish. Hymeria weighs two tons and is five meters long. She's an insatiable carnivore. The amphibian's limbs are his saving grace, for now. But the amphibians are about to find a way to leave the dangers of the water behind for good. The key to their future success lies in changing their eggs. They evolve a hard waterproof casing which protects the young inside from the drying sun, so they can be laid on land. The babies will hatch out, fully developed, air-breathing and independent. They are the first ever true vertebrate land lovers. The very first reptiles. Here nothing is as it seems. The 50 meter giants towering above this water world may look like trees, but they're actually distant relatives of ferns. This oxygen rich atmosphere has fueled the growth of new, super sized arthropod predators. This Mesothele spider is the size of a human head. She'd be hunting cats if she were alive today. Reptile Petrolacosaurus is hunting on the forest floor. Unlike our amphibian ancestors, he has tough scaly skin which traps moisture inside his body, vital for all land dwellers. Because he doesn't dry out in the sun, he can venture away from water. But that means encountering new predators. And once outside, she's vulnerable to larger predators. Meganeura is a monster dragonfly, queen of the Carboniferous skies. 
With a wingspan of almost a meter, she's the size of an eagle with an appetite to match. The rising water levels suit one group of hunters, amphibians. They've continued thriving over the last 60 million years. Their thin skin still restrict them to the water's edge, but they're now powerful predators with a devastating pair of jaws, ready to ambush anything that wanders within reach. Neither does Arthra Pleura. He's a distant relative of modern millipedes, but as long as a car. He can rear up tall enough to look you right in the eye. Although he's vegetarian, his strong jaws could still deliver a nasty bite. But with their efficient hearts and waterproof skin, our versatile ancestors flourish in the new dry climate. Evolution takes over. Lacking restrictive armor means the reptiles can start to make it big. Their muscles and bones broaden and extend. Their bodies mushroom into huge new shapes and forms. Our distant ancestors have come a long way. They've now conquered the land. Edaphosaurus bask in the early morning sun. They're three meters long, as big as hippos, and like them, they're vegetarians. A new species of plant has evolved, able to withstand this cold, dry atmosphere. Primitive conifers. But Edaphosaurus aren't the only sailbacks, and now their biggest enemy is one of their own kind. This is Dimetrodon, a vicious carnivore, the biggest reptile on Earth. She'd normally attack adult Edaphosaurus, but today she wants to avoid injury. She's pregnant and almost ready to lay her eggs. Egg thieves lurk in the shadows. Like this carnivorous amphibian. But he's too small to make a full frontal attack. He'll have to bide his time until the female turns her back. And now the reptiles evolve to tighten their grip on land. Their legs straighten and lengthen, holding them more upright and giving them speed. Their backbones and muscles get stronger, and they even start to look like mammals. To house a larger brain, their skull bones expand into an enormous head. And out of their jaws thrust huge, sharp teeth. A new age of specialist reptiles has dawned. This is a one-ton Siberian Scutosaurus, a distant ancestor of turtles. Although he has no shell, his back is covered in hard, bony plates and just as well. These sand dunes hide a fearsome predator. Scutosaurus normally travel in herds, but this old male's got left behind, and his keen nose senses danger. His attacker is a carnivorous Gorgonopsid. She's fast, powerful, and equipped with deadly weapons no hunter has had before. 
Despite the presence of these heavyweights, smaller creatures also eke out a living around the waterhole. Diectodon, a hardy little burrower, just half a meter long. They live as pairs in spiral burrows, which remain cool even in the desert heat. Like the large predators outside, Diectodon are distant reptile relatives of mammals, and although it will be 30 million years before the first true mammals appear, there are already family resemblances. There is another unseen resident of this waterhole. A monster much less suited than the reptiles to the changing climate. A fugitive from when this desert world was lush and green. It lies in ambush underwater like a crocodile. A giant amphibian labyrinthodont. But pound for pound, this female's picked the wrong target. As millions of years go by, the climate shifts again, and the reptiles are among the first to recover and repopulate the empty earth. From creatures like little Diectodon, larger, stronger herbivores evolve. These tough forerunners of mammals seem poised to seize control for good, but they are in fact set to play out their final scene. The dawn of the Triassic era, and the Earth has only just begun to show signs of recovery. The deserts have stopped growing, and huge forests of primitive conifer start to recolonize the land. In these new forests, plant eaters recover first. One in particular. Like most of the large reptiles, they may resemble dinosaurs, but Lystrosaurus are more closely linked to mammals and to us. Astonishingly, their vast herds make up more than half of all life on Earth. Never again will a single species do so well. Deep within the forests, though, a rival is evolving, a new type of animal destined to change the face of life on Earth. Meet Euparkaria, a tiny insect eater. He may not look much of a threat to the dominant reptiles, but the key to his success is in his hip. The way his thigh bone is attached allows him to run on two legs, freeing his hands. This kind of agility has never been seen before in reptiles, and gives you Parcaria an edge. Euparcaria will lay the foundations for a new group of reptiles, the dinosaurs. Giants such as Tyrannosaurus and Diplodocus can all trace their family tree back to this little insect hunter in the Triassic forests. They're being watched by a vicious nocturnal hunter, a Therocephalian. Lystrosaurus are strong opponents. But this hunter doesn't rely on power to make a kill. The attack is swift and seems to have been unsuccessful. But this predator's secret weapon is a poisonous bite. Its venom is more lethal than a black mamba's and it quickly floods the Lystrosaurus's bloodstream. All the Therocephalians have to do 
is wait for it to take effect. They need to cross a river, but its banks are lined with open jaws. Chiasmatosaurs are the earliest ancestors of crocodiles and alligators. Their strange overbite means once they get their teeth into a victim, there is no chance of escape. They don't normally gather in such numbers, but they are here for a special event, the annual migration of the Lystrosaurus. If you're a Euparcaria, the river's not a great place for hunting insects, but he has speed on his side. Instead, it is creatures like Euparcaria that are about to usher in a new golden age. These specialists on two legs will provide a cornerstone for one of the greatest dynasties the world will ever see. Their descendants will become the dominant life form on Earth for more than 170 million years and be known as the most notorious monsters of them all. Welcome to the Age of Dinosaurs.